over the summer, there have been three more rounds in the Mobile One Top Gear British Rally Championship. Though the first one, the Scottish back in June, was more like a family outing for Britain's foremost rallying family, the McRae's. Father Jimmy and sons Alistair and Colin were out in force. But most of the attention was on one car, a new four-wheel drive Ford Escort Cosworth, driven by Malcolm Wilson, ten minutes ahead of the field, as part of a testing programme by Ford. It had had only one outing in Britain before, so how does it perform? It changes direction a lot quicker, I think, because it's a shorter wheelbase. And also in long corners, it's a much better balanced car than the Sapphire. You don't have to left the brake or anything like it's hard to keep the balance of the car. So the feeling from the Centurion is that the car is very, very easy to drive. But we will see probably on this event how, how quick it really is. And quick it certainly was. It was the first time in this year's championship that Colin McRae had had anything to chase. The new Escort had a two-minute lead on him at times. Although Wilson will be in a Sierra on the Lombard RAC in November, he and the all-conquering Colin McRae must be the only realistic contenders for Lombard's new £100,000 prize if a Brit finishes first overall. But Ford were not the only people to be on a test run. McRae's Subaru had been fitted with a new semi-automatic gearbox. Like some Formula One cars, the gear changes were made by pressing a little button on the steering wheel. This is state-of-the-art rallying. For McRae, it all took a bit of getting used to, and old habits die hard. Testing apart, the McRae clan were trying to make rallying history by taking a 1-2-3. 21-year-old Alistair, in his standard group N Sierra, fought his way up to a remarkable second place, but was still over four minutes behind big brother Colin. But snapping at Alistair's heels was another young man from Lanark, arch-rival Robbie Head. He would break the McRae monopoly and finished third with driving like this. The sizzling pace of all the youngsters squeezed five times British Rally Champion Jimmy McRae into fourth place and led him into uncharacteristic errors. Colin McRae and co-driver Derek Ringer, it was all plain sailing and their third win of the year. Well, that was the Scottish rally, hot, dry and dusty. Six weeks later, the circus was back in action, across the water in Northern Ireland. And this was a very different kettle of fish, but it was the first all-tarmac round of the championship. For Colin McRae, Ulster has never been very kind. Last year he failed to finish. And like on the Scottish, he was not running with the semi-automatic gearbox as he expected to have a big battle on his hands in Ireland. Main opposition came from local man Bertie Fisher, who won the event first in 1982 and again last year. He was the first person to post quicker times than McRae. Having set fastest time on two of the first four stages, he was only a second behind overall. Irish champion Kenny McKinstry, who mends lawnmowers for a living, was chasing the other two only seven seconds behind. The problems were on the horizon. Uh, we've bust a diff. Uh, bust a diff casing. Uh, problem is we don't have another one. So uh, we're just, just having a look here and seeing whether we can maybe patch it up or whatever. But all the hard hammer work came to nothing. On the very next stage, he went out of the event. Frank Marr from Southern Ireland is leading this year's Irish Championship and despite the odd problem on this rally, moved up the field to finish in third place. At the end of the first day of the Ulster, Colin McRae's Subaru had drawn 30 seconds ahead of the field, but he was being forced to pull out all the stops to stay in the lead. The gods hadn't smiled too kindly on the drivers overnight. It was a cold, dark, damp start at 4 o'clock in the morning and after a night of rain, tyre choice was going to be critical. Bertie Fisher was already showing battle scars from close encounters with the Irish scenery. You've just been off in there. Just at the very end there. What happened, Colin? Uh, uh, he just skidded off a little bit, nothing too bad though. This was the end of the rally for battling Bertie. The apparently unstoppable Colin McRae may have looked vulnerable at the beginning of the event, but by the end he had yet again demonstrated his ability by winning the rally by a massive 11 minutes. An easy win? I was looking forward to a good battle all the way through because we haven't had one all year uh, and once they were out I was left out mowing so it's, you know, it takes, takes a bit away from it. 
After the two rounds, Colin McRae leads the overall championship with Louise Aitken-Walker, although 